But I'd like to summarize a few of the things that are really important to me. We are a group of patriotic men and women who love Britain and are fed up of watching this country go to the dogs. And as our name suggests, while our ethos is very much informed by the characteristics of faithful service to this country that our veterans embody, we are not merely a party of veterans. Above all, we are a party that believes in genuine democracy. We are a party that consists of the kind of people that would not ordinarily have any interest in getting involved in politics. Just like the silent majority of hardworking men and women across this country who just want to live peaceably with minimal interference from the state, who want to be able to enjoy the rewards of their labor without being unreasonably defrauded by a bloated state, we have no interest in throwing our weight around or imposing our views on anybody else. But at the same time, we are people that cannot turn a blind eye when we see injustice being done, when we see those we care about being wronged, when, for example, we see a Christian pastor, Paul Song, thrown out of a job where he served his nation faithfully and sacrificially in the prison system for 20 years just because someone from another religion is appointed to a senior role and decides that he no longer wants the influence of Christianity to be dominant in Brixton prison. <clears throat> We are people who want to live in a country where teenagers can walk the streets without fear of being stabbed and where those who are stabbed don't have to wait for six hours at A&E to get attention and where the police are allowed to do the job of fighting crime rather than being sent on diversity training courses. or trawling through social media pages to pounce on someone when they type something that's not politically correct. And we are people who don't want to live in a country where the government allows foreign money to fund extremist agendas and to influence government policy. Because in their desire to buy votes, they spend money we simply don't have and end up putting our nation into debt for many generations to come. And we are most definitely not a party that can ignore the injustice of watching our government wage unnecessary wars and place massive burdens on our troops and require them to do things that would break most people, only to discard them and neglect their welfare once they were deemed to have exhausted their useful purpose to the state. We are not the kind of people who will allow the government to turn their backs on our pensioners, those in our society that have raised and nurtured our generation and paid faithfully into the system for years, only to be allowed to freeze to death in winter because the government agrees to continue hiking up heating prices to pay some bogus carbon tax at the same time that oil prices continue to drop. <laughs> we are not people that can stand aside while a quarter of our population suffers mental health issues related to money and jobs and benefits and as personal debt levels worsen and more and more marriages fall apart and childhoods are destroyed at the same time that the government allows half a million job seekers to come into the country each year to satisfy the demands of big business for ever cheaper labour and ever greater profits. <laughs> And I can tell you, 
We are certainly not people who once we commit, knowing we are on the right side, will easily give up a fight. And we will fight for a truly sovereign, independent Britain and the everlasting right to self-determination. We will fight for a Britain that will be renowned throughout the world for personal liberty, for genuine democracy and for the equitable and uncompromising application of one rule of law for all who live within our shores. We will fight to make Britain truly great once again. Now, our government does not believe that any of this is possible or even desirable. They would have us believe that in spite of being the world's fifth largest economy and having the world's best, albeit far from biggest, military, we are too small and too weak to survive on our own too incompetent to make our own laws and too foolish to try our own cases in our own courts. Our government does not believe in our country and it does not want us to be a sovereign, independent nation that is in control of our own destiny. But the people of this country do. On the 23rd of June 2016, in the largest democratic exercise in this nation's history, the people, in spite of having been subjected to a generation of anti-British propaganda that concluded with a tax-funded mass mailing to every household, the people stood up against the government and told them in no uncertain terms that yes, we do believe in Britain. <clears throat> We believe that this nation is indeed capable of exercising its own independence and forging its own way in this world. We have waited long enough for action. We have been patient with our leaders for too long. The 24th of June, 2016, should have been a day of great celebration the government should immediately have set the tone for a new, stronger, more prosperous, outward-looking Britain. It should have sent out delegates to speak to national leaders worldwide, to tell them triumphantly that Britain was now open for business, and to have begun the process of negotiating trade deals that would have secured a great future for our nation and reinvigorated the special relationship with the Commonwealth nations. But instead, our quizzling government has talked down our country and has gone cap in hand to Brussels as if our economic survival depended on the condescending grace and favour of foreign leaders whose own country's markets offer us so much less potential for major growth than the scores of other nations that we already should have been strengthening our ties to by now. <clears throat> A competent British government that understood how to secure our national interest would already have driven the EU to jealousy by now. Brussels should have been queuing up to knock at our door. While they watched in alarm as we started preparing deals with more competitive trading partners worldwide. But instead, our so-called leaders have made Britain look weak and desperate and have completely undermined our negotiating position, promising instead to give away 1,500 pounds of every British taxpayer's income to a club that we were never legally entitled to join and which we should rather be looking to sue for taking 400 billion pounds from us in fraudulently obtained subscriptions because it has been no secret for the last 330 years that our nation's constitution unequivocally states in black and white for all to see that no foreign prince, person, credit, state or potentate hath or ought to have any jurisdiction 
power, superiority, preeminence, or authority within this realm. <laughs> Our leaders have given away our sovereignty and our birthright because they don't work for the people and they don't believe in the people. And if our political class does not believe in Britain, they are frankly no longer qualified to govern us or to make decisions on this nation's behalf. <clears throat> So in summary, it is the mission of this party to take away the authority of our political class, to make destructive decisions on behalf of our nation, and to hand this power to those who genuinely care about the future of this country, the ordinary men and women who believe in Britain and who pay the salaries of our public servants and who elect them to office. And as I said earlier, in this party, none of us has any interest in imposing our will on anyone else. Instead, it is our mission to assert the will of the British people on Parliament. And God willing, those of you in this room and those who can't be here, but who are signing up at home to join us, you will go down in British history as the patriots that led the move to hold the government to account and to finally bring them under the legitimate democratic authority of the people of Britain. <clears throat> You know, the mission I have just stated will take a lot of work to bring about. It will require a complete overhaul in the way democracy functions in Britain. But it is high time that an organisation comes forward to undertake this very task, as Britain's present course is simply not sustainable. If we do not act now, we will never again have the opportunity for independence. We will become a vassal state or even a glorified region if Westminster gets its way. There is a clear and present need for a new system of democracy in Britain. A system that cuts out the middleman, that intercepts our instructions for government and replaces them with their own. A system of direct democracy in which the people have the right to vote directly on legislation that they believe will serve to benefit this nation first and foremost. <clears throat> and we must fight for this system as a matter of urgency because it is now clear that our archaic 18th century model of representative democracy is finally dead. A system that allows three quarters of our MPs to vote against the majority of the country in a referendum that engaged 34 million voters and that was responsible for the single most important decision in a generation simply cannot be argued to be either representative or democratic. <clears throat> Parliament's claim to be sovereign was only ever legitimate for as long as it could be argued that their decisions reflected the democratic will of the people who put them there. And until now, Parliament has been able to get away with usurping the proper authority of the British people because there has been no way of proving that the decisions that our politicians claim to be making on our behalf are actually in direct contradiction with this nation's will. But God willing, soon there will be, because in this party we envisage something so effective, so irresistible, so powerful, that if we here rise to the challenge of successfully engaging the British public in participating in what we launch today, then we simply cannot fail. And within a short space of time, our political class will have become completely powerless to resist the will of the people of this country.
Now, what I'm talking about is a parallel parliament, a form of direct democracy that happens at national level and which we will pioneer from within the DV direct system that we have already created and which we invite you to sign up to today. As a member of the Democrats and Veterans, you own the party. You get to control its future. You will immediately be able to engage in direct democracy internally within the party. You'll be able to propose and vote on policies. And if they gain the support of the majority of our members throughout the DV direct voting system that we've created, we'll put these policies into our manifesto and we'll ensure that we fight for them at national level. You see, what we are doing internally within the party is actually a scaled down model of what we will eventually present to the nation at national level. And if we do our job right, once the British people are brought on board, they will finally come to see that they really can take back control. They really can assert their democratic will upon parliament. Our political class will no longer be our masters. Direct. <clears throat> Direct democracy will truly turn them into servants of the people. Now ask yourself, are they going to take this lying down? No. When we threaten to take away their power, how are they going to respond? Let me tell you, as soon as any intelligent person within the establishment reads our manifesto and constitution, and listens to what we have said this evening, we are going to become hated by them. They will attack us. They will mock us. They will lie about us. They will deliberately misconstrue what we say and will seek to sow disunity within our ranks. And frankly, if we are not attacked by the establishment, if their mouthpiece in mainstream media, I'm sure those members of the press here accepted tonight, does not very soon seek to ridicule and defame us, then frankly, we may as well give up because it will mean that we are not a threat and we are simply wasting everyone's time. As leader of this party, I want you to please judge my success by the degree to which I personally am hated and attacked by the mainstream media. <clears throat> and by the extent of their efforts to marginalize us and misrepresent us. Now for those decent, reasonable people who dislike confrontation and are not used to being attacked, I'm really sorry to have to tell you that you're not going to enjoy the process of this party making ground and becoming a real threat to the corrupt establishment. But please understand, we need to be attacked. It is the only thing that will drive good people to our side and create a righteous wave of indignation amongst patriots across the nation to enjoin the fight to finally put the people of this country in control, which is exactly where our nation's beautiful and ancient constitution demands that power should rest. <clears throat> So, it is time to gird up your loins, to get psyched and to prepare for battle. And I can tell you, while many will be apprehensive before the fight starts, there is genuinely no more satisfying feeling in this world than knowing you are on the side of right to engage with a truly treacherous enemy. So let's relish the attacks. Let's not care about what the media say about us. Let us never crave their respect or acceptance. Let us never yearn for respectability, as to be friends with the establishment is to be an enemy of the people of this great free 
proud nation. <clears throat> If we fail, the establishment will quickly address the vulnerabilities that we will have exposed. So please, let us all commit at once. Let us leverage the principles of speed, aggression and surprise to hit them hard, metaphorically speaking, of course. Thank you.